Uh, this is uh, the legendary 226. We're, uh, we're going to talk about the history of this breed and uh, how it came about and uh, how good it has been over the, over the years and it's been a long time. When I first met, met Carol Nismith, they were winning every other derby. Ray Alexander had brought me to Carol Smith and then we went to Mid-America. Ray Alexander won that derby. And he was advertising his roundheads as the winningest foul in the world and no American was contesting it. When I met uh, up with, uh, with Carol, he was again the one that was winning. And, uh, and Carol was even joking. He said, breakfast time, if we stop winning, Nene will be with another group of cockers. Anyway, what happened there was, uh, was Carol had, uh, had, had mated his sweaters to Stuart chickens, which were Eugene Brown. They were the Oak Grove team. And uh, what happened there was, uh, was at the end of the season, when they started shipping chickens to Mexico, this uh, broodcock accidentally got shipped to Mexico and there was no way the Mexican would return it or there was no way they, they could retrieve it. So what Carol did was he went to, back to the, to the source and got the full brother. The full brother was just as nice, but was not winning as much as the other one. So what he did was he single mated an old left in hand which was pure sweater, another old right out hen, which was also pure sweater. And he got, he tried to look for the pullets of that old other sweater that got shipped out. And he couldn't find but one and she was her, her back was all scratched up. So what, uh, Carol got, got her anyway and single mated her towards the end of the season. When I got there, I bought a trio I got one hand from the left in hand, I got one, one pullet from the right out hand, and I got one stag from the possum hand. They called her the possum hand because they, there was four of them. The sisters were eaten by the possum, that's why her back was all scratched up. So when I got this, uh, when I brought the, the trio back, I told Carol, I said, when I breed towards the other two hens, they're not as nice as when I'm breeding towards the, towards the son of the possum, the possum pullet. After the breeding season, the possum, they, they turned out the, the old, two old hens and the possum pullet to freshen up. There, there was only one clutch of eggs on the, on the three matings. And uh, this, uh, this, this uh, pullet went back to the, to the place where the possum quickly ate her up. So there was only one, one, one hatch, one clutch. I think there was five, five stags, I think, five stags. I got one stag, I had the first choice. I got one stag, uh, Harold got another stag, Carol kept two, and I think, uh, he must have let somebody else have one. I think it was J.C. Allen. J.C. Allen was the son-in-law of Shorty Bollock. J.C. Allen bred that and he kept it too. So every time we'd, bring, we'd, we'd go back, we'd, I said, Carol, you know, this, this is this, uh, the one that's coming out of the possum, of the possum pullet is, is definitely superior. To any, to any which way I breed them. And then we know now that it's superior because she was the daughter of the winning, of a, a cat that was producing all of those win, winners. And they were winning every other derby. So I banded him 226. So, so that's how the name Possum 226 came about. It was just a number of my wing band, yeah. So when people say that they also have 226, how can they have two to six when it's my women? And there was not many of them. And suddenly when they when it became very popular, everybody seems to have two to six and everybody seems to have uh, possum.
but there was very little of that. There was very little of that. This was sweater crossed over to the original old hens, and then to the daughter of that winning brood cat that got shipped to Mexico. That's how I think they maintain their genes of being of being uh, winners. And uh, I bred that I bred that cock for 11 years, and they were producing. Anybody who had just even one half of that blood was winning, and I, I, I could, I could, uh, I could trace it. I could trace where, where all of these chickens went. Some people want to keep it a secret, but uh, I, 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 I know where all of them went. And uh, people would get, would get uh, battle, battle cocks from, uh, from people that purchased from me. And when they become winners, they breed it to their, to their chicken and. Somehow it would breed on, and uh, that was, uh, you know, that's that's difficult to find. That's difficult to find, and uh, I I, I uh, attribute it to the genetics. The genetics was really very strong, and probably it was very strong in that particular rooster. This uh, this chicken uh, was uh, came from Sweater McGuinness when he fought in uh, probably Haver Hill. He brought four roosters and they were yellow-legged. Sweater McGuinness only fights, only has green-legged chickens. They were wondering what Sweater did with it, that it became yellow-legged. And you know, uh, the, hist the history says that good people were, were got got uh, got one of one of each. Ray Hoskins got one. Walter Kelso had one. He made Cecil Davis breed it, then that those are the chickens that Cecil Davis would, would fight here and they do so well. Uh, the other one that got was uh, Harold Brown. That was his golden yard. The only bloodline that was uh, at par with with uh, fighting with the uh, with the lemons of uh, Duchalsi. If there's a fifth, I think if I'm not mistaken. The, eight, the 84 of uh, Duke Halsey also had this blood. So you can, you, you try to trace it. It was the, the yellow-legged yellow Baclean of, uh, of uh, Ray Hoskins. It was the Golden Yard of uh, Harold. It was the Cecil Davis uh, blood that uh, Walter Kelso had. So all of these were all, all winning everywhere. And it must have been a fresh cross because uh, Sweater Baginis never had the yellow-legged chickens. So he must have put something very recent. It must have been a fresh cross, meaning you don't really need very, very inbred chickens to produce, as long as you're able to keep it. Like uh, Ovid Michael would say, there is no greater virtue than the mere retention of what you have. So I think I've proven that with uh, Ray Alexander's um, round heads, with the sweaters and these high action hats. These high action hats, it's, that's another story, but uh, it's also a success story. You know, I, I, I was a good friend of Carol, so I would, I would know his, his uh, pants and I could see where I could get fresh blood without altering the old blood. So I, I, I knew where to get the fresh blood. Incidentally, Incidentally, Harold had this, uh, this yellow-legged blood, and then when he started getting some green-legged pullets, he bred, uh, he bred uh, sweaters to the green-legged side, and they became green-legged, so they became hatches. And this high action is the green-legged side of the sweater. So when you put them together, it's a, it's a merger and an explosion of good genes. This is exactly how they, how they look like since, uh, since we've started with them. They haven't lost any of their beauty. Their, uh, their legs are nice and keen. And uh, they got good bodies. And uh, you can breed them to a duck and they'll still win. Well, my sweaters had always been two to six. And we've fought everywhere. We've fought Candelaria, we've won that three times. Uh, people have fought there all their lives and never won once. 
We fought in uh, Araneta and I've only joined Araneta several times and I won, I, I won it several times. Even the Thunderbird Challenge, I joined the Thunderbird Challenge four times and became champion twice with perfect scores. And uh, we fought in Dumaguete, we fought in... Uh, and uh, one of the biggest rooster fights is, uh, is in Davao. In the Araw and Davao, we've also won that twice. And the two times that we did not win it, we were just one fight away from winning it. Five out of six twice, and six out of six twice. They're, uh, they're very versatile. If the other rooster wants to engage, they'll, they'll climb as high as the other rooster wants to go. If they meet on the ground, they also cut very well, and they have, uh, normally they have more fit than, uh, than, than, their, than their opponents. So it's been, uh, it's been the most uh, successful successful pure or cross. They carry themselves and uh, when you cross them to something that you also like in the other bloodline, that they allow that, uh, that trait to come out. So they're, uh, they're a good dancing partner. They don't step on the, on the feet of the other partner. They get better as cocks. They're kind of inbred and uh, they're a little bit, slightly late maturing. Thank you for visiting me. This is my signature 226 and like Thunderbird, wala nang iba.